here we are in July. Here we, here we are in July, uh, and we didn't have we didn't have a ZDTV last week, did we? And we've been, we've been on a little break, yeah. What, why is that? Do you know? I believe it's because you were in the at the Linux Foundation mm-hmm. conference, correct? Mm-hmm. Yeah, correct. Yeah. And then and you gave a talk. Yeah, yeah, I did. And then, yeah. And then what happened? <laughs> and then I tried to go home. <laughs> and then that didn't work and out so hot. You didn't. No, I did not. I was Why stuck. Why are the I was, flights kind of being they delayed are, so much? Is it just the terrible. pilot shortage? I, I, I don't know. It's, you know, like the, the, the thing that drives me nuts is <clears throat> you're allowed in the United States to overbook a flight. And they do that because so many Efficiency. people don't. Yeah. Well, not only that, but they know that if they, that there are some amount of people who just won't make their flight, which is just mind boggling to me because like, who has that money to just waste. Right. But uh, so they'll oversubscribe uh, plane sure. flights, and then they, if it's if it's a full flight, they ask people to volunteer to leave, all that sort of stuff. Well, right. I was in Austin, Texas, last week for the Open Source Summit North North America, and while I was there, uh, on the way home, I was stuck in Austin. Like all of the flights got canceled, um, and I don't know exactly why. Uh, I found one tweet that mentioned. There was some sort of COVID cleaning in the um, in the air traffic control tower going on. Wow! Okay. To which I thought, "Hey, how how about you do that at like you know two in the morning, not two in the <laughs> afternoon?" I would have I would have appreciated that. Yeah, uh, lots of lots of frustrated faces in that airport. So yeah, I didn't get back home. I didn't sleep. Uh, I, I slept on the um, on the floor of the airport in Baltimore, BWI, and then got on a flight at like eight o'clock in the morning and flew home to Rochester. And I was just in, not in a mood to, 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 to do a ZDTV last week. No, you can only do so much. Does that make you want to always carry around a little sleeping sack with you whenever you're <laughs> It does not. It does not. This is literally the, those, the first time. Have you seen those hoodies with a built-in pillow? So you just kind of like pull it up over yourself and, and fall forward? No, but uh, totally. Uh, it's, that's really interesting because... On the plane, I was thinking I wanted some sort of headband. Not, like I don't like the neck pillow things, you know. I yeah, wanted a headband that I could attach to the back of my shirt or to my belt or something, Hold so that head. so that when my when my head wanted to lean forward, it just wouldn't go anywhere, and it would just be like right there. So you're not falling <laughs> on your neighbor, like, like on well, your well, I, you know, the left or the right probably would still have a problem. I don't know, but I, like I usually, I just wanted to, I just wanted to be able to be right there, like and just go to sleep. Anyway. Right on. Anyway. What are we doing right. today, Clint? What are we doing today, Ken? Let's take a look. ZDTV. Uh, I don't know if anybody caught it, but last two weeks ago on the ZDTV, I'm pretty sure I had the wrong thumbnail in um, in the YouTube. I updated it. I see the and date is right. It's, uh, you know, I, I really would, I got to figure out if there's a way to just have PowerPoint display the, the date for me so i don't have to keep uh, creating it uh i keep oh, yeah, just switch to like graphviz or mermaid or one of those so that you can render your slide from code uh, yeah maybe uh, maybe maybe um anyway so we're going to look at the release notes for 26.0 and then we are going to look and make my zach my zd administration console dark We've had okay. uh, two people, at least, maybe more, on the discourse forums asking how that might be accomplishable, if it's accomplishable. So I figured, hey, why don't we try it together? Um, I have well, not. Doable. I have it's not. It's installed separately from the ZD stack, right? It's basically uh, an interface to the ZD stack. So. Yeah, yeah. And we'll go through all that um, in a bit. But I have not done this in a long time. So it'll be fun because I'll probably screw up along the way and we'll see, uh, we'll see what happens. All right. So let's, uh, let's get into it. We have, oh, we have, uh, Andrew had no idea that I was so grumpy. There you go. Nice. All right. Uh, let's get into it. Boop, doop, doo. Uh, where is my... Where did my page go? Oh, that's cool. Apparently my browser window decided to die. Let's bring it up. Boom. Is it this one? Here we go. All right. So 
Release 0 0.26.0. Breaking changes, everybody. Oh no. The Fabric Management Terminators API has changed the name of some fields. See below for details. Uh, let's see. That's in the Fabric. Uh, CLI, no big deal. Okay. Terminator field name changes. The following fields have been renamed identity to instance ID and identity secret to instance secret. Well, that makes a lot of sense. Um, the fabric does not have the idea of an identity. It was a convenient word to be used at one point, um, but uh, we're trying to make it a bit more generic. Oh, look at that. The use of identity was confusing as it's also used in the edge. Um, so this is just a simple rename, but it does break API invocations. I doubt many, any people are probably using this heavily. So it probably should not be a big deal. But if you are using this API, do be aware. Uh, that's the, that's the, the fabric control API. Um, is it the control API? I don't know. I just call it the fabric API. I actually the don't fabric. know the answer to that. Maybe it is. Uh, circuit inspect will now gather more information. Express details. Receive buffer now has the following new fields. Acquired safely. Nice. Next payload, payload count, sequence. Uh, ZD fabric create terminator now takes a instance ID instead of identity flag. That's great. I don't really recommend people play around with creating terminators. I'd rather see people using uh, the edge over the fabric right now. The Edge gives you a bunch of uh, good stuff that I would recommend, but you know some people might want to play around with fabric-only uh, networks, in which case you'd have to use slightly different term instance ID over identity. All right, well that's a pedestrian release notes. Nothing, no, no explosive, uh, you know, panics. That's good. All right, well then let's go right into it. What do you think, Ken? Yeah, I mean, I can think of questions to belabor the point, but I want to get into this uh, going dark with Zach. Okay, let's do it. Um, I've got three windows here. I don't know. Let me make it bigger. The one on the right is, in my view, quite squished. It is incredibly squished. It is all the way, all the way squished. <laughs> Even more squished. I've, I have left it. I have left it so. Oh, okay. I was, I was debating on fine. simply remove. You know what? I'll just get rid of it. There. Now it's not squished anymore, Ken. All right, I see that we're in we WSL. We're in a we're in the program files directory where ZD Desktop Edge has been installed. No, not anymore. Now not we're anymore. in my not now anymore. we're in my temp folder because this whole machine okay. is not relevant. So uh, gotcha. what we're gonna do is we'll take a look at my ZD Edge console, which apparently I turned off and did not turn back on again. Let's go to SSH to CD AWS. Make that bigger. Um, let's recap real quick why 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 we're doing what we're doing. So why is this interesting? The um, the Zach is a ZD administration console. It's a web UI. It's an interface to the control plane of a ZD network. Correct. Yes, absolutely. Okay. So it, it's a, perhaps a, a friendlier interface, but it's also a powerful and sensitive interface. And just like any other service that you might want to, any other server that you might want to protect, this too is a server that can be protected. It's, it's gonna be running on the, con it, it can be actually, it can actually be running anywhere, right? It doesn't have to even be running on the same computer as the controller process because it's just an interface to that. Yeah. So the ZD administration console is a node application and its job in life is to access the management API of the ZD controller and to show you um, the management plane, things like making identities, management things, plane. yeah, things like, um, uh, what routers are involved and sort of stuff like that. To me, a control plane is more about uh, like the routers talking to the controller. Management to me means user is involved. Um, I don't know if that's a universal ism, but that's the way I think of them. And so as far as the scope of the ZAC, it's always one, exactly one network, right? 
No, actually. At one time, you can switch between networks. Yeah, in fact, um, let's. I'm going to take a step back because um, so it's a Node app, and its job is to access the management API in order to present that to a person like me. It's a UI, so um, it's useful there. Your point before though was that it doesn't. uh, It it can be installed anywhere. It doesn't necessarily need to be hosted in the cloud. Now, I came to the OpenZD documentation page because um, if you were to go to one of our quick starts, one of these guys right here, yep. at the at the end of the quick start, it'll say, hey, why don't you install the Zach if you're so inclined. Right. Yeah, you can free. certainly install the Zach. It sure is free. Um, so you can do that. And uh, when you when you follow these quick starts... They are generally going to have you install the Zach close to where your controller is. And in this case, uh, oftentimes it's the exact same address as the controller. And so this will go through, tell you how to do all that. um, If you follow the quick start, where to go. And and basically it expects you to install the Zach where you installed the quick start just for ease of uh, operation on you the consumer right so that there are variables set up and there's tls and you know stuff like that that's already just pre-configured ready to roll for you right so if you were to go out and run one of those express installs like i said um you'll end up with an environment i have done exactly that i've used the host it myself um quick start because i have a server that's out in amazon as you can tell based on the address that I went to, which is this EC2 instance up here. And what, when you first land at that page, you saw before it didn't work because I had it off. <laughs> but now it works because it's now on and it's on the open internet. If you were to be so inclined as to type all of this in, then you could get to my ZD administration console right, right. now. You don't need permission. You, not to access it because it's not dark yet. So I can, right. you, you can, if you can get there, you can click on that. Now, this is where you were talking. If you want, ah. you can connect to multiple uh, ZD controllers sure. and, and manage your ZD controller this way. So one of the things that I didn't actually mention on the discourse forums that I could have is you can just run ZD admin console wherever you want. If you don't want right. to run it on your virtual private server, you don't have to. You can run it locally. Got it. Yeah, it's just a client app for the management API. It's exactly what it is, yeah. Now, I have changed my password, so you cannot use the default password. If you were to put this on the open internet, I do recommend you do that, because, you know, scan and exploit is one of the big things that people do nowadays. So let's go ahead and log in. When I log in, you'll get the login screen like this, and you'll see I've got a whole bunch of policies, a whole bunch of services, because I use this thing all the time. Um But this is what we're going to do. We're going to turn this dark. And so I think what makes, oh, also, we should should note. And by dark, you mean there will be no server port listening on the internet or perhaps on any network. um, Well, not on any network. We have to be careful about that. Uh, What we'll do today is we will will, uh, turn off the public access to the ZD admin console from the internet. That's what we'll do. Um, and what we are not going to make Zach dark yet, like the actual application itself. Um, Kurt, one of the fellows that works on OpenZD, has added the node SDK to um, to Zach, but okay. apparently it only uh, worked on Mac because when um, another fellow here, Skip, tried to turn his Zach on, we kept getting some errors. So we rolled okay. that back. Uh, but um, that'll be coming shortly, and hopefully that will come with a, a browser demo. So right. we can look, so we can for, we can look for that. We, meanwhile, we can accomplish this using a, a tunneler? Yes. In fact, that was what I was reaching for when um, we started to have that little darkness in, on any network conversation, because I am going to install an identity on my tunneler right here. Um, So I run Windows and I have a tunneler and I have a whole bunch of identities and I don't think, no, I don't have an identity for this particular network yet. So I'm going to make an identity for my network and I'm going to make my Zach totally dark. 
All right, and that's what we're going to do. So why don't we just go ahead and go start. I uh, can't scroll. I'm going to make it bigger. Let's so see how that. All right. So um, first thing that we need to do is figure out what are we going to intercept, right? Uh, I want this to be like called clints.zack, I think is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to make a new service. And in the, uh, in the ZDCLI, I would make a config first. But with the ZD admin console, I can actually define my configurations when I make my service. So let's so call this. I have, I have one forward looking question here, just in case um, you hadn't thought about it. Right now, you're accessing Zach over HTTPS. Mm -hmm. So you're going to run into a, like a, a domain name uh, check That's mm -hmm. eventually if you're going to be connecting to the same server. So is there also an HTTP server where we could replace TLS with ZD? Um, yeah, uh, let's see if I don't know if it's actually listening. Uh, what's what's the SS command to find out if it's is it minus L? It's minus, minus LNTP. And if you run it with sudo, you'll get the name of the process as well. Oh, really? Let's do sudo then. I can already tell it's there. It's this one right here. Um, so you can see node is running. And node yep. listens on 1408, which is the default port that Zach runs on. Right. So, so if I were to curl to HTTP uh, local host 1408, yeah, HTTP, right. it should say redirecting to slash login. So if I go so to slash login, login, you can see a whole bunch of HTML. So that's so, the same. That's the same server on a different port. This is the same server on a different port that is not TLS enabled, correct? Okay. 8443 is TLS, and 8443 maps to 8443 locally, I do believe. Let's see if I go 8443 and put an S on and this you'll thing. Get a I should get an error, error. right? Yeah, I should get an error. That's right. And I now I'd give it a dash K, and it's the same HTML. And it's the same thing. Okay. So yep. your two choices then are to. Use the HTTPS server and just override the domain name check for the mm -hmm. server cer certificate or to go out to Let's Encrypt and go through the DNS hoops in order to get a valid certificate or just replace TLS with ZD. Yeah, and uh, you don't need to do the DNS hoops um, with Let's Encrypt too. You can also do the, um, what is it? Uh, there's DNS, there's another way to do it. What was the other way to do it? Well, you can have Let's Encrypt. You can use Acme to answer either a DNS challenge or a web server challenge. In That's both right. cases, in both cases, your 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 challenge response is uh, providing a unique string that's provided by Let's Encrypt. That's right. That's the that's the other way to do it. And in both of those cases, you need a valid DNS entry because uh, Let's Encrypt will come back to the URL that you told it to go to. And then okay. if it's there and if it passes the challenge, then you can get your certificate. global DNA domain name. Right, right. Yes. So I'm not going to be able to do that. Now, what I could do is I could make another certificate using the same PKI, my own local one. And using explicitly the, trust it. Using the ZDCLI. And then I could add that root CA into my browser and then it'll all be right. happy, right? Because that'll Which be a... Which is fine for a development or a test, but... You, you oh, no, no, it's would. fine. No, 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 no. That's fine for everything. Like uh, self-signed certificates are perfectly fine as long as you understand where they're coming from and where the trust root is and you can sure. actually trust it. I'm just thinking about the orchestration of thousands of endpoints. You have to have a, you have to have a way at scale to distribute those self-signed certs. Um, well, that, that is and isn't true. Because uh, if you have a thousand endpoints, you don't have to distribute a self-signed certificate. You can distribute the JWT, which then enrolls itself, which then creates its its own um, PKI for, uh, locally for you, right? Like you don't need to distribute or create that certificate. You can just give them an enrollment token and um, send it that way. Andrew says he would stop saying self-signed and describe it as Private root CA. Interesting. Um, I haven't heard yeah, I mean, private that's, that's root CA myself. Yeah, I think. it's less commonly said, but it is more accurate. Uh, a, a, a CA certificate is self-signed by definition. Of course, yeah. Um, I, uh, I find that interesting. Maybe we'll circle back to that later, 
You threw me off with a private, what is it? Private root CA. I love it. The private, the private root CA. <laughs> right, which is All just right. a, a CA certificate that is not a publicly verifiable third-party CA. Sure. Okay, so now we know what we're doing. Let's go back to Zach here. Where is my Zach? And let's, uh, we're going to call this the dark Zach. The first thing I'm going to do is define my intercept. And I don't need a configuration. Uh, I don't need a router. Do I want, to, I want to host this myself? So I don't need a router. Where's my, I want to make a new one. It's the way down here. Okay. All right. So this is going to be the dark Zach intercept v1 that's the way i tend to do my things i'm going to intercept uh clint's zach Just invent a domain name doesn't even have to be top level how neat huh and then let's see the connect we do have to supply a value i do believe there's a bug in the old zach here if you don't supply a connect timeout you might have a bad time and it is the number of seconds i do uh, i do enjoy that we allow you to set a timeout of two billion seconds <laughs> Two billion seconds. That's pretty awesome. Uh, what identity? I want this to be my router, which is going to be my, uh, let's see, ZD Edge. Will this uh, ZD? No, it's not showing me my router identity. So, uh oh, uh oh. Oh, no, no. This is the, uh, this is the dial options. What am I doing? Never mind. I don't want it in dial options. Okay, cool. Let's instead keep scrolling down. Port. I suppose we can do port eighty. What do you think? Yeah, for the for the client side, you'll do, that way you won't have to type any special port. Yeah, TCP source IP. I don't need a source IP, so we'll click add. Now we have a dark Zach config. Uh, I want to do one more now. Now I want to do a host v1. I'm going to add a new configuration for that. This is going to be the uh, dark dark Zach host. V1. I think I used a hyphen before. <clears throat> and now the address is going to be local host port 80. Nope, port 1408. So this is also neat. Um, we are, uh, don't worry, Arslane, you can always catch the replay. He says he's late. Um, so with uh, local host here, uh, we are creating a service. This is a host v1 configuration so it is the offload point of the traffic after you've gone to the other side of the um the zd overlay connection and because right. everything in a quick start runs on our virtual private server it's all running on local host uh sorry it's all running on the same host uh the edge router the edge controller and the zd admin console all runs on the same machine we can actually terminate our traffic to local host. I can use 127.001 or whatever, but this is uh, relative to where the router is. And this needs to be addressable from where the router is. Obviously local host and 1408 will be addressable. Uh, forward the protocol. I don't need to click any of these things on. Uh, you, you can choose to, but you can see I don't need to because I'm going to just simply, oh. I'm going to simply tell the service where to go. This is more useful if you are doing like a CIDR range or a right. wildcard DNS, then you maybe would come in here and use these things, but I don't need to. We'll click the add button. We've got two configs now. That's fun. I like this little weird display issue. We got a, like a little bit of JSON. Um, rule attributes. I don't care about any of this. Do, 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 do. All right. I'm save that. All right. So now I've made a service. Uh, service is useless unless I have a configuration. And so um, because I, it's not a configuration, a policy. Uh, because I used a, um, a, a router as my offload point, I now need to give my router the ability to host that service. So let's do that. And we'll say the router, uh, the edge router or the uh, router tunneler. Well, there. I mean, I I don't differentiate, frankly. When you okay. when you run a quick start, the quick start will create the ZD edge router with the, the minus T flag or okay. minus, or minus minus tunneler, which means that edge router is enabled as an uh, a tunneling 
entity or device. Yes. And that's really useful when you want to provide access into your private networking space. And that's what I've yeah. done here. Now, from this machine, I could also, if I had a, a bigger virtual private network in the sky here in Amazon, if there was another machine this router had access to, we could obviously define a service that let me offload the traffic somewhere else. But using localhost, <clears throat> always the best option if you are not application embedded, because that's the f uh, least amount of trust necessary. All right. So we're going to do a, let's see, a bind. Yep. Uh, service role attributes. I need to type in, uh, what was the dark? Okay. Let's do at dark. There we go. I don't know why I needed the at symbol to activate that. Maybe Jeremy will come and watch this later. Uh, let's see identity roles. We need at ZD. Now this is going to perturb me if I cannot find my, my identity. We're going to be hamstrung on this bug cam. <laughs> let's try this again. ZD. All right. Let's just verify I've got an identity. So real time debugging. Uh, we're going to do a ZD login because this is express install. I know that'll work. ZD edge oh, list identities. Uh, yeah. And that one's actually sourced. In fact, let's take a little deviation here. If we, if we tail, yeah, if we tail minus 10, my bash, bash RC, uh, bash, yeah, right there. You can see I added this little line to my bash RC which is great because when I log into this environment, it'll simply source, it'll simply source that file. And so it'll tell me, um, it'll, let's see, I think you need to disable your browser's auto completion. Maybe. Well, I haven't, I don't think I've gotten there just yet. Um, so here, uh, it'll tell me I it has located my ZD binaries and put them on the path. You can see I installed this a long time ago because my ZD is old. It's at 25.4. Mental note, I need to upgrade. Yeah. Um, and then once that's done, then I have ZD on the command line. But also, um, let's see, this file. If we, Got it. Okay, so you just if follow we look the instructions at it. and the express install to get those helper functions set up in that. Exactly. When, when, you, so, when you source this file is when you get them because an alias gets created for you. That's called ZD login. And all yep. you can see is it just does this. Uh, ZD login. Yeah, and you know what? I probably just uh, enumerated my password. So I might have to change that. We'll see how that works out. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'll do that really quick. Let's see. Let me see. Uh, all right. Uh, now I'm all thrown off. It's hopefully, hopefully it scrolled by too quick. I'm going to have to review the replay. Um, where was I? Oh, yeah, I logged in. So let's do a ZD edge list identities. Identities. And I have 50 identities. So let's do a uh, name contains and this is ZD. Okay. Yeah. No, that's not the right one. I want no. uh no, I want an edge router. Is it just called edge router? Oh, okay. So in the quick start host it anywhere, it uses the host name as uh. the identity. So that makes sense. So let me flip back over to here then and do an at IP. Hey, go. we got it. We got it. Okay. I could have found that using Zach too, but I didn't want to leave this form. Right. Uh, posture check attributes, not important. Semantics is fine. All oh, that looks good to me. Okay. Now we click the save button. So now my edge router should be able to bind or host the dark service. Let's go ahead and make a new, this is a service policy. Yep. Dark. Zach so the service policy dial. is going to grant permission to connect to some services for some endpoints. That's right. Yep. And uh, dark Zach is what I want. And then so my that's the service that we're going to grant permission for. And we're I haven't made two. I haven't made the identity apparently. Remember, I, I forgot. So now I need to do that. Um, so what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to use attribute based. Um, authentication yeah. here. So that way I haven't it doesn't need to exist in advance. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's what's nice. So I'm going to add dark Zach as any identity with the attribute of dark Zach is going to be able to dial the Zach. Right. 
which is kind of like a group. So it, when you add an endpoint to that group, it'll have that permission. Yeah. And so now let's, um, let's see, we said auto completion didn't work on the identity role attributes and some other fields. So oh, if there's other fields, I'd like to know what other fields weren't working. Um, oh, yeah. It did work for me right then, but I had to activate it using an at symbol. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't obvious. Um, let's go ahead and make a new identity for me. This is going to be uh, Clint Dark Zach. Now I want this to be Dark Zach as my you don't role. Have to prefix that with a hash symbol. Not here because I'm defining okay. it. If you're referencing it, yes. If you're defining, oh. if you're defining it, no. Uh, I don't know what happens if you add a. Let's see. It might be smart enough to know. Or it's maybe, a different role. Maybe, well, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> you never know until you try it, right? Let's see. Go to user, admin. I'm going to say a no on that one. One-time token. Yep. Uh, other options in here are interesting. Certificate authority or username and password. CA is cool. If you haven't played around with that, you might want to try to play around with that. I'm not going to use uh, latitude and longitude. I could put that in here if I wanted to. <clears throat> Save and it. That would just be to show on the map where this, where this endpoint is. Expected. Yeah, back on the back on the dashboard here. Yeah. Andrew says you're you're good on the password thing. Oh good. Thank you. Frame by frame review shows no password. That is Appreciate good cuz I totally thought it would. Uh, okay, we're going to put this at c colon backslash temp Clint Dark Zach. And now I got to go back and find my ZD desktop edge for Windows, add an identity. All right. So you type just type that in identity with the right and then, Poof, you can, yep, and you can see I already have a service. Oops, that's the wrong button. Let's try that again. You can see I have a Clint's Zach on port 80. Let's, let's see if it actually works. HTTP, Clint's Zach. Did not send any data, empty response. Now this is where debugging comes in. <laughs> All right, so we do see that it looks like I have an entry. I'm gonna just go and prove that. Let's see if... Uh, Windows subsystem for Linux will allow me to make a DNS request. I think it does out of the gate nowadays. Uh, so we'll do a dig at 100.64.0.3 for Clint's Zach. And you, you can an see answer. I get an answer. So that's fantastic. So now if I do a curl to HTTP, this port 80, I should get an empty reply from server. That's pretty interesting. It. So. Now we're going to do a journal dash F U Z D router. And we got JSON love looking at JSON logs. It's my favorite. I'm going to do the curl off screen here. See what it tells me. So we see some information get to the ZD router. This is a dial successful connection, successful connection. So that looks like it actually succeeded. Doesn't it? What could I have done wrong? Ken? Where did I go wrong on this one? Anybody remember? This looks like it's working. Do you have a blanket edge router policy? You mean so that uh, I can send information to anything? Like a, a public access policy? <coughs> Is that what you mean? Where ed any endpoint can access any edge router? Right. Well, let's run policy advisor. Let's do that. So let's do ZD edge policy advisor, Clint, Zach. Is that what I called it? Oh, it's identities. Say identity. Yeah. Identities. Clinzac. No identities found. All right. What did I call that thing? What did I call that? Uh, let me make that smaller. Clint Dark Zach. And I think you got it. Yeah. Was it ZAC or ZAC? Okay. So it says we do have a common router and we can do a dial. Let me put the minus Q on there because it's a little bit easier to see things. Yeah. Uh, and let's do the same thing for the, um, the identity. Where was the identity? This one. Let's do the same thing for this one. Just to make sure it right, go the other way. Nope. It's just the reverse. This one's the hosting side. Okay. So that has bind, 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 bind. And is Dark Zach in there? Dark Zach is in there. Okay, so everything seems no okay. Yeah. yeah, everything there seems okay. If we go back and do that curl again to local local host colon 1408, that works. So why does the curl to port 80 not work? 
Maybe we should take another look at your service configs. You want to do it with Zach, or do you want to do it with uh, ZDCLI? I think uh, I think Zach I think is Zach's probably, probably easier. Service configurations. Let's make sure. Yeah, let's make sure that it got there. Ah, oh, case sensitive. <laughs> That's apparently I'm it's a case human, sensitive. Not a computer. I know it, right? Uh, the intercept is there. Let's see if the host is the local host, local host. That looks correct to me. Everything seems okay. So you don't need any forwarding as long as you are. It's a little bit different here in Zach, but you specify the protocol, the address, and the port. Yeah, it looks like it would work. You've named your config. It's of type host v1. All of that looks right. Hmm. You know what I did though. You know what? You know working. what I? You know what I did? I wonder if this is a ZD desktop edge bug. I toggled this thing off and on. I am. I am now worried that there's some sort of bug in the ZD desktop edge for Windows on the toggling. So I'm going to turn it off and I'm going to okay. turn it on. I'm going to turn it off and on again, and we'll see what Just happens. Just in case. Just in case. If so, it'll be an interesting bug. I don't want to go there. I don't want to go there. I don't want to go there. Well, let's see. Do I have an answer? I do. Is it the other window? Oh, you don't see this? No, I do. Oh, okay. okay. I can't. I'm I, just want, I think curl. you had two windows, one for curl and one to show the log. I did, but I'm, I'm going to leave it here because I want to go to Clint's Zach on port 80. Yep. Empty reply from server. Well, that's good. It's not a ZD desktop edge for Windows bug. Where did I go wrong, Ken? Um, TCP. LOC. What happens if you what happens oh, if you give it a slash login? Hold on. Is it listening on localhost? Did I like is it I typed localhost before, right? Yeah. Yeah, when you did the SS command. Yeah, let's but see. So you want to do it, it might uh, be login? sending you the redirect. Oh, excellent point. Excellent point. No, no, I guess you would still curl would still see it. Uh, well, I didn't have a, the, I didn't the have the header. minus, I didn't have minus V on, right? It's just an empty reply. Yeah, it's just not responding. It's as though it's as though it is going to the wrong port. That's what this feels like to me. Oh, right, because your tunneler is presenting a socket, so it thinks it's getting a reply. Yeah, but the other side should be responding. Right, but you're not actually getting an HTTP response, just an open socket. Yeah. Which Ooh. immediately closes, I guess. Well. So yeah, let's check be? your let's check your listener and make sure it's bound to the loop back on fourteen oh eight. Yeah, actually I I, I know we looked I mean, at I, it, but I don't I, remember. I did a curl to localhost right there. <clears throat> oh yeah, yeah. Let's okay. see. Uh what is my Uh, how do I find my IP address? He's oh, IP the wrong... space ADDR. And that's the space. one I was looking for. Yeah. Uh, this is that's my local machine, right? Curl. It's fourteen oh eight, right? Oh, good point. Okay, so let's well, let's just for giggles. It's listening on all interfaces. For yeah, that's what I would expect. Let's try that for fun. Should uh, you should get the same response, right? I I should I should. Yeah, empty response. All right, well let's go back and let's tail the log again. Journal. You have IPv6. You think so? Why would uh, why would IPv6 matter? I would still expect uh, since I can curl to localhost fourteen oh eight, I would expect it to still con complete successfully. That is what I have instructed the edge router to do. Maybe I could start the edge router in debug mode. I guess I don't know. What does this say? It says successful connection. I mean, that's, that's succeeded. So 
I don't know where this has gone wrong. I can tell you what, though, Ken, this ZDTV has gone wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll just do our best. Well, yeah. we're just it's live debugging, right? This is weird. I uh, did not anticipate a problem like this. What could possibly be the problem here? Dial levels info, successful connection. Like it's it's connected correctly. You can see so the I ephemeral port connecting to the remote port. Hypothesis is that IPv6 is a higher priority, and therefore, if you try to connect without specifying the IP protocol, then it will use that if um, if it can. However, we know that we're intercept. We know that we can only intercept IPv4, and we know that we are intercepting it because you saw the router log saying connect connection successful. So we're getting past the IPv6 potential problem when we when we see activity on the router. Well, the point is valid if using a local host. So that was that's actually a good point. So with local host as the special word that I used, then maybe IPv6 gets in the way. But I, I went out of my way recently here to, to redo the host with uh, an actual IPv4 IP address, which should, right. that should fix the IPv6 problem. Right. It can be IPv6 on egress. And that might be what Wild Forest was saying, is that when it looked up the domain name, like localhost, then it could be finding the IPv6 address, which the server might not recognize. The server might not be listening on IPv6. But yeah, you're right. This should have fixed that. Just for giggles, can we turn on the forward protocol address and port? We'll do them all. Uh, now I have to change my intercept, though. So if you do that, then you cannot use this address. You have to use the actual IP address. Let's make sure that comes down to my ZD desktop edge. I should get a Momentary different... Momentary pause. I see 1724... Blah, 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 right there. Okay, so okay. now already up so now if I go to this, and if I go to this, and I do a this uh, for HTTP, this on port 80. Wouldn't that no, forward port 80, though? Is it, it's, what if you do? <laughs> That's a real good point. That's what it's doing. Yep. So we need to go back, and we need to edit the host. We cannot forward that port. Uh, forward protocol address. A lot forward of addresses port. right here. Yep, we cannot do that. We want this is going to be one four zero eight. Yeah. This might take a second. I don't know how long it takes for for that to be noticed. <clears throat> Exceeded the maximum retries creating circuit. Yeah. Okay. There. Now it's been noticed. Empty reply. So. Uh, I mean, it's it's the the edge router is clearly making the connection here. You can see that it is a successful connection. The Zach is yeah. oh, you know what? I don't know if there's a this, there's well, a what is that point there? Oh, okay, I see. It's twenty eight fourteen oh eight no, on that IP journal. address. Journal CTL ZD console. Um, is... Let's try this again. Now let's see what happens if I come here. No, it's so bizarre. Uh, is there? Oh, how about IP tables? Is IP tables going to be involved in this one? Shouldn't be. It's all local host. Yeah, your router is running with a, a host mode. It's ho it's tunneler binding as host mode only, so there it doesn't create any IP tables rules. Yeah. I'm, I'm plus I've, I've already shown a, a process running locally could access it. Right. It is there. Docker network. How Let's can see. we? IP address. How can we simplify the the configs, if at all? Are there any any other permutations of configuration that we can try? Pose down. Is there a Docker compose file on this? I don't know where. Um, um, let me get rid of uh, any Docker stuff. Docker system prune dash a. Hmm. 
Doesn't seem like it made a big difference. There's still a Docker network there. Uh, I mean, it's connecting though. It's the, well, the router believes it's connected in IP tables. I'm not an IP tables expert. <laughs> IP tables dash L dash capital L and then give it the um, input if you want to. Well, which kind of a problem are you suspecting with IP tables? I don't know. I was just looking to see if there's anything in there. We have uh, Wild Forest saying that uh, maybe the Docker network is uh, causing some shenanigans. Okay. Well, you see the capital output and Docker, Docker isolation stage, those are all chains, and you can put those words immediately after the capital L. Do any of them seem page. interesting to you? I haven't... I haven't uh, glommed on to the, the hypothesis yet uh, how yeah. IP table might be I, interesting. I'm, I'm still stuck on the fact that localhost to port 80, localhost to port 1408 succeeds. And that's the same path that your router tunneler is going, right? Yeah, in fact... On the um, same computer. Yeah, and when we look at the, the uh, edge routers logs, I'm just going to type it in because it's journal CDL CD router when we look at these logs and when we, when we try to make the connection you can see that it is connecting from an ephemeral port to this address on that port and it thinks that it is successful so right. if I do a churl if I do a curl to there it's, okay. it's, it's well, working well, if you indulge me, I'd like to do a TCP capture of the, the contents of the request flowing from... Okay, you're on it. So let's do an, a dash NNVI. As such? Um, since you already have the I, you don't need it here. Yeah. And then a space dash capital X. Space... And we want the host. I would just port 80. Yeah, you can do just TCP port 80. Is it TCP? Yeah, TCP port 80. One word? Uh, no, it's all space, separated by spaces. Yeah, that'll, that's your BPF um, for capture. Let's try that. That's actually, it would be 1408, not 80 yeah. in this yeah. case. So let's let that run while we uh, attempt to connect. <clears throat> all right, so we can see the request arriving. Can you scroll up at all? Just go up to the top of the, the capture there. All right, so we see the request Flowing, we see send, send act. Oh, oh, and and encryption. If you have that, should ending. that should be that should be enabled and it should be acceptable. It should be. Oh, decrypted. but but that's the problem. Ah, damn, that's the problem. Zach, I think when you make the service, doesn't uh, doesn't enable that out, out of the gate. So what is expecting encryption? Where is it? Where is the encryption? Encryption is not required right there. Okay. That's the whole darn problem. We had this exact problem in, uh, in discourse too. Goose legs had this particular problem because of that right there. Now let's do a select intercept type is dark Zach. Do you still have the configs? Um, Hang on. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they're all there. HTTP uh, doors dark sack in here. Dark sack. Add. Okay, that's all good. That's all good. And now, since I've deleted the service, the service policy is actually gets deleted under the hood too. Because you didn't use role attributes. Yeah, because I didn't use role attributes. So I got to come in here, edit this one. Unselect that IP. Yeah, I mean, it was, oh, it's this one. That's what I wanted to do. Uh, dark. So Zach. it just disappeared on you since it was deleted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And same, same, same down here. It, uh, it removes it. 
Yeah, so you got to use the at symbol to activate that, which is not great. Save. Okay. Well, TCP dump to the rescue, Ken. Thank you for the idea. All right. Now let's come back here. I guess we'll let that roll, but it won't matter because now that's going to work. <laughs> All right. Yay. Well, that was, that was a lot. You do it in your browser. There you go. That was a lot. No, uh, I got to do HTTP here specifically. Oh, you're going to be like that, aren't you? Uh, I'm going to do HTTP colon slash slash port 80. No, are you redirecting me again? This is, this is oftentimes a mess because the, the browsers now try to a bad state. No, no, no. The browsers try to be very friendly and they try to auto upgrade you from port 80 to port 443. And yeah. so a lot of times that goes, Can you see that happening. No, I'm going to do a curl real quick to uh, HTTP to make sure it works. Uh, I've apparently broken my DNS entry. Clint's Zach. I was going to say, look at your Zdu. Yep. I'm going to do that dig again. I'm going to see. Like, that should work. Curl. HTTP. That IP address is no longer responding. That is Maybe you not need to cool. your tunneler again? I mean, I... Obviously, I shouldn't have to, right? Like that, I don't. Right. I don't like that answer, but th that seems to be what's oh, going we're debugging on. Debugging now. Yeah. I, in fact, I'm going to go a different route. I'm going to go to the um, to the service configuration and to the intercept, and I'm going to remove this one. I'm going to save it. I'm going to make sure that comes down. All right, and then I'm going to come back over to here. It's probably going to be a different IP address still 12. Well, that's interesting. I might have to. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to turn this off and on again. There might be a different bug there. Let's try this. IP routing worked. Well, that's good to know. We can always, oh, you know what? Uh, I had the forward, I had the forward on too. That's going to be what the problem is. During our debugging, we had allowed the oh, right host. so it's kind of going to forward that address yeah. instead of localhost yeah let's let's turn all that off that's probably what my problem is yep it's going to work now did I, did I save it as soon as it has a chance to update yeah let me go back and look at the logs not here journal uh, i don't know if it's gotten to create a terminator there we go that was the whole problem so this is an, you know, I got to be honest. I uh, I don't expect the encryption to cause that particular problem. I would have thought I don't that fully understand what the I, problem was with encryption. Yeah. So uh, apparently, when one side is expecting encryption and one side isn't, um, that will cause problems because uh, one side will be trying to decrypt traffic that is not uh, encrypted, right? Right. So I would have thought that we would get some some other kind of error there. That's something we'll have to go back to the team and, and check out. Yeah, we need a safety check, like a sanity check on that end -end encryption. Yeah. <clears throat> so now that all worked, uh, I did notice one thing, which is um, I'm going to, when I logged in, this was the other thing we were going to do, and I don't know if we'll have enough time, but I'm going to my actual EC2 instance. So now the other thing I wanted to do during this um, ZDTV Make management API dark. Yeah. So, uh, that is done by going to the open ZD dot github.io. No, no, github.io github.com slash open ZD slash ZD. And then finding the change log and finding the 0 0.20, 0 0.20, 0, 0, change log. Where is this one? In 20, we had the API split. And so we're going to go and try to uh, pull this together here. Basically, if you come and you read through all of this, you can see all these addresses have changed. But at the end of the day, what it really comes down to is it really comes down to this, um, where's the web section? This web section down here. And then at the end of the web section is the... Oh, come on, how far up does it go? Whew. 
web uh, bind points right here. So these bind points are what the important important part is. Here's where you can define basically what listener you want and then um, what APIs you want bound to that bind point specified down below here. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to try to change my local, <laughs> uh, we're going to change my local, uh, not local, my ZD admin, nope, my ZD controller config in the sky on my virtual private server to take the management API off the internet. So right now, if I go to uh, EC2 8441, HTTPS 8441, you'll see that this returns an answer. It exists. So we're going to try to turn that off so that it doesn't That's exist. API. Yeah, it's the controller's API. Yep. Uh, ZD Home. Uh, again, I'm using the quick start. So if you don't have ZD Home, um, it's because you either didn't source the environment file it leaves behind or you didn't use the quick start. And then I can uh, edit host name dot YAML, I think. Dot YAML? Dot YAML with an A. Yeah. To, to find my controller config file. And so if we go to the very bottom of this, this is where it's going to go off the rails too because I've not done this too many times. I'm going to make this a bit smaller so I can fit. Most of it. I don't know how to tell VI not to wrap. I don't think you can. I'm going to make a new bind point. So let's see. One, let's just four yank. One, two, five yank. And I'm going to do, what do we want to do? 18441. The address sure. for this. Local host. 18441. So you're see, just creating a separate listener. That's what I'm doing right here. I'm making it in this parlance, it's called the bind point. And so um, if I have this right, and Andrew's hopefully watching because he's the fellow that yes. did all this, uh, he'll, hopefully he'll, he'll put in a chat if I uh, fall off the wagon here too far. Uh, but <laughs> what this is going to do is it'll basically instruct the controller that there is another interface to listen on, what the port right. is to listen on. And then um, I believe what the address is to to listen on. I think it's just to listen on, right? Well, did Let you me... just want to keep it separate, even though it's the same server certificate? Keep keep what separate? Did you want to keep the 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 new bind point separate for some reason? Uh, for sure, yeah, yeah. I want this to be totally off the internet. Okay. So okay. what we're going to do is we're going to come down to the bottom now, and this is where we find our APIs. And you see the bindings that are done here. It says yeah. that uh, you have you have edge management is the binding, and you have edge client as the binding. These are the APIs which are bound. You see that? So what yeah. we want to do? Uh, okay, cool. Ken's got to go soon. No problem. You could you could just announce it, buddy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you, can, you can drop whenever you need to. Uh, you're, you're just uh, riding my shotgun here, so I appreciate it. Um, what we need to do here is we need to define a new binding. And I think that the API up above, let's see how far I can get here. Where is the bind? So the bind point interface is required. A host port, the address is required. The public address that external incoming requests will be allowed to resolve. Okay. That's all fine. That, that seems all fine to me. Now, what I'm looking for, Ken, is where it is. Oh, this is the, this is the key. That, that name. Zero, 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 zero. Client management, I think, is what's referenced down below. I think you want the interface to be localhost or 127.001. Yeah, yeah localhost is what I've got in there. But I'm, what I'm trying to find is where the binding, how it maps back to the actual... Uh, oh, you need to create a new section under web, add your bind point there, adding a bind point to an existing set of APIs will allow some multiple interfaces. Okay. Well then, I have gone off the rails. <laughs> where did my where did my client go? Uh, local host. All right. Good luck, okay. Clint. All right, buddy. Well, maybe you I'm can you. maybe you can watch and see if I I made it to make it happen. All right. So you Good need luck. to make a new Bye. section under web. A new section under web. 
This is a uh, dark API bind points. Oh, let me just paste this here. Interface address. Okay, so uh, I needed to create a new section under web. Add your bind point there. Okay. Adding a bind point to an existing set of APIs will allow them to listen. Um, oh, yeah. Okay, cool. So now there's my bind point. Now my APIs. Binding. How does this work? <laughs> Where is this declared? I must be. I must be missing something else. I must be missing something else. Name client management bind points that. Oh, oh, oh I know. I gotta just comment out the API I want. I got it. I got it. I got it. Let's see. Nope. I want to comment this out because that's what I want up above. So it's under APIs, options, bind points, identity. It's hard to, I'm gonna have to shrink this down. I can't, uh, I can't see what the indentation is supposed to look like. APIs. Okay, it's just right there. Paste that in. Binding edge management. Oh boy, how many indentations is that supposed to be? I'm not, I'm not, obviously, I'm not a VI expert, am I? Let's see, binding and options should be at the same level. Yeah, binding and options. Okay, did I do it right? Let's see. Whoops, not when I right quit. <laughs> Let's see if I did it right. Uh, sudo actually let's go back over to another let's make another window journal ctl cd controller that way when i do a cd no system control Let's see if this works out. Let's see if it starts. Web listening, 8441. Seems to be up and running. So I do a curl to minus K, HTTPS, uh, local host, 18841. Connection refused. Connection refused. Oh, yeah, it's uh, 8441. Okay, it's still listening on the wrong port. Did I edit everything correctly? Something tells me I left it behind. So, uh, 80, oh, 8441 is just management. Maybe that's the difference. Uh, I don't know if there's a management API that is not... Is there a management API that is not accessible? I don't know. Let's try Zach now, which was going to this URL. So if I did this right, I should no longer be able to get to my Zach and no longer be able to log in. And that does look like it's the case. Well, that's exciting. Okay. So now I still have, um, I still have 8441 available because the client API is bound on this and that the client API is what the edge SDKs will all need to access. So it's, it can't go away entirely. Uh, but the management API, so if we do a, an edge v1 management, for example, that should no longer be accessible on 8441. Whereas, uh, not Clint, cl client, by the way, Clint client, difficult thing for a fellow like me to type. Uh, the client API slash client should be accessible. And so we see that the Zach did not, uh, did not work out, which is good. So uh, let's do a new edge controller. I don't know if I can, uh, name is going to be dark Zach and then HTTP colon slash slash Clint dot Zach one four. No, no. Uh, oh, I need to make a new service. Don't I? That's interesting. No, I should be able to do the local host HTTP S 
localhost18441. So now the Zach should try to communicate to localhost18441. I think that'll work. Uh, my session has expired. I don't think it worked. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, Andrew, we'll see you later too. Thanks for hanging out. Uh, let's see. So 18441, I would have thought would have succeeded because uh, Zach should be local. Not Zach, but um, the controller should be listening. Let's make sure that 18441 succeeds. It gets a no answer. No, 404. So 404 is okay. That means it gets a response. And I see, did I see the uh, the controller log something? No, the controller didn't log anything. Uh, did you say if there was an edge management v1? Edge management v1. Hey, it is available. All right, cool. So we have just proven that the API is dark. Um, the question though is why Zach won't work? Zach should be able to get to localhost. Let's do the whole entire URL. I think that might be necessary. No. Well, well, looks like Zach might have some work to be done on the API split. Once you've made your API dark, Zach might not allow you to specify the full path. And it doesn't really surprise me because it's not expecting to have to supply this information. Um, trying to decide if there's a way for Zach to understand this. I would have thought, honestly, I would have thought 18441 would have worked. It is 18441, right? Yeah, 18441. I would have thought that that would work. Let's do localhost. That's exactly the right one. I'm going to slash. Nope. Zach doesn't want to use it. All right, I'm going to have to get Jeremy involved because uh, I'm not a great node debug expert, but maybe Jeremy can help out. Uh, thanks for everybody who showed up and commented in the chat. That was awesome. Uh, that was really exciting to see. And uh, we got through it. The bug that I hit was because the client side end-to-end uh, -end encryption was enabled, but the far side, uh, sorry, was disabled, but the far side seemed to be enabled. So I'll have to talk about that internally, maybe figure out if that's actually a bug somewhere along the way. But we did figure that out. We did make our uh, management API dark. So now my ZD CLI should not succeed unless I go to the 18.441 URL or uh, port, hosting port. Um, and yeah, that'll be it for today. Uh, again, thanks everybody for showing up and checking out the, the, the live stream. We'll see you next time.